Well, this is a little different today. Uh, just you and I, listeners. No, uh, no guests to interview. Just us together having a little old FDR fireside chat. We wanted to jump on today and uh, and go through a few quick little talking points with you. Number one, uh, we don't get enough opportunities to say thanks. Thanks for listening. This podcast is a passion project for many of us who turn on the TV or or the radio and notice that you know politics are polarized on purpose that to, to drive attention to the advertisers people say some crazy things so our goal with this podcast has always been to talk about the issues with the people who are involved in it and to come away entertained for sure but more importantly informed we always want to leave you a little bit better than we found you and so we've appreciated the great uh, attention that this is drawn and we appreciate the the people who are listening and all the great guests that we have on so Definitely want to come on and say thank you. Thank you for making this podcast what it is. And we hope you keep listening as we continue to bring on, whether it's elected leaders or subject matter experts, the people who are going to talk about the issues that you care about. And we want to do it in a very civil and constructive way where we take a, the temperature down a little bit and be able to have a fact-based and reasonable conversation. So that's been our goal. Now then, if we can then jump to a quick history lesson, if you were alive in the mid 1900s the name edward everett would probably mean something he was an important guy not only was he governor of massachusetts he was a senator and a congressman he was a, you know an ambassador to great britain even president of harvard the guy did it all and a world-renowned order uh, he was the guy you called on when you needed somebody to say something and say something really well so he was chosen to give the keynote address of the dedication of a military cemetery during the civil war uh, he spoke for two hours, 15,000 words, and didn't look down at his notes once. Gave a speech of poetic, flowery prose. Told everybody exactly what they needed to hear in a very flowery way. But we don't remember Edward Everett, and we don't remember what he says. No, instead history remembers the guy that got up after him, who spoke for less than two minutes, 200-odd words and began with four score and seven years ago. We remember President Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. I love the dichotomy there. It's a lesson in brevity for sure. It's a lesson in humility, absolutely. Um, but it's also a lesson in message. Whatever amazing things Edward Everett chose to say that day, unfortunately history doesn't remember because Abe Lincoln got up and gave one of the greatest speeches of all time, and it was because he was able to honor the fallen and inspire the living. And he asked everyone for a, a renewed commitment to democracy and freedom. Now, this podcast is far from a Lincoln Gettysburg address, but our goal is always for a renewed sense of democracy and freedom. And with the election looming and an opportunity for us to actually act on all the things that we spend 364 days of the year talking about, what an opportunity. Uh, for us, like Lincoln, to honor the fallen, to the very real people, people like my uncle and my grandfather, grandfather who, who fought in World War II and an uncle who, who was in Vietnam, people who, who you know, put on the uniform to protect and defend. Um, we, we think of all the people who have sacrificed lives and served in the line of duty for the sole reason of protecting our freedoms to act, and that great freedom includes the right to vote. So our hope is that you will take everything that you learn and listen to in this podcast and take it to the ballot box. Uh, look at the top of the ticket. The people that are running for president are absolutely going to affect our life. But almost more importantly, take it to the bottom of the ticket. As we've talked about before, potholes are not partisan. And uh, when it comes to making sure that our streets are plowed and our children have safe, secure schools to learn in, who we elect matters. So if, if you're confused and you're unsure about what to do or who to vote for, you can go to idahovote.gov, uh, and you can learn what's on the ballot, study it out before. If you have never voted before, what a great opportunity to start. You can check to see if you're registered. If you're not registered, don't worry. You can go to your polling location. And you don't know where to go. You can find it on that website. And just make sure you take a proof of ID and a proof of residency, and you can register right there, and you can vote. Uh, what, a, what a simple and great way to exercise a right that, uh, people have died so that you have. Uh, also, after the election, a little PSA. Uh, nothing. I haven't seen a more depressing statistic than the one that said one in six people have stopped talking to a close family member as a result of the 2016 presidential election. It's asinine to me 
that we choose to alienate people close to us because their political views are different than ours. I get it. There's nothing more annoying than that person on Facebook that is forcing their political views down your throat on social media and you want to unfriend them. And maybe there are times that's appropriate, but I'm a huge advocate that more communication is better than less. And as we uh, self-isolate or find ourselves in tribes and circles where people are just telling us everything we already agree with, that's a problem. Uh, And I have never met a political candidate that can do more for me than a close family friend can and has. So this is also a a plea from the bottom of my heart not to distance yourself from those around you who may have voted a little different, but instead bring them in. Welcome into the fold. Uh, Show them your perspective, but, you know, seek first to understand and then you can be understood. What a great opportunity for us this election season to come together and do what we do best as Idahoans. We, uh, We vote our conscience. We vote our constitution. And uh, then when it's all said and done, we all come together with a renewed sense of commitment to democracy and freedom. And so I, I know lives get busy and it's, it's hard to make time with everything going on, but it's so important that you make a plan and go vote. And it's uh, Tuesday, November 5th. It's always the first Tuesday following the first Monday in November, Election Day. It's, a, it's just a great opportunity to exercise that voting right. Uh, if nobody votes, <laughs> we have big problems. So let your voice be heard, get informed and get out and vote and, and make sure you can make a difference, not just for your family and your community, but for everybody else that's relying on informed voters being able to help shape democracy. Thanks again. Be safe and God bless.